This female song thrush is searching for snails. You see she's been successful already by her swollen crop. Thrushes are omnivorous, but when feeding young, they tend to go for high energy foods like earthworms, insects and slugs. During droughts, their preferred food becomes more scarce and they have to move on to larger prey, such as the garden snail and the brown-lipped hedge snail, sometimes known as the grove snail. These snails are a good food source, however a considerable amount of effort is involved in breaking them open. It's been shown that the skill is basically instinctive, but they have to learn how to do it efficiently. Song thrush are the only birds that consistently feed in this fashion on snails. They use a hard surface to break the shell open. And this is known as an anvil. A lot of the debris of other broken shells lies around. The noise that's produced is quite considerable and, it's been, and it's known to attract predators such as sparrowhawks. So the anvil is usually placed at a reasonable distance away from the actual nesting site. The song thrush is also known as the mavis or even the throstle. Here's one feeding on the much smaller brown-lipped or grove snail. These are much easier to break open. The parents hunt by sight. Once they've found a snail, they will fly back with it to the anvil. They'll hold it by the opening and repeatedly hammer it at the softest part, which is the top of the coil until it breaks open. They then extract the snail and abandon the shell. The garden snails are so large, it's very rare that they can actually swallow them. You have to take a considerable time to break them to smaller pieces. You also seem to rub them con constantly in the dust to remove the slime. The process will often bring them to the notice of other animals. At this point, often blackbirds will fly in and steal the food. Calcium is a vital mineral to birds. They use it in the egg shells and in their skeletons. So you'll sometimes see them taking discarded, broken snail shells. They'll eat them to get the calcium. Also, the coloured layer of the snail shell, known as the periostracum, has some protein in it. Song thrushes have benefited from global warming, even if gardeners haven't. For the large garden snail was once confined to the coasts in Scotland due to severe winters which they couldn't survive. The warming effect of the oceans allowed them to live here. It's been many years since there was a really severe long spell of winter weather. This has enabled them to move many miles inland. If you go back and look at the photographs of the, of the thrush anvils, you'll see that the grove snail, the smaller species, comes in a fairly bewildering range of different colour patterns, although they're all the same species. Some are entirely pink, some are entirely yellow, and others have got a variety of colours as well as a number of bands on them. It's long been a puzzle as to why they should be. One suggestion has got something to do with camouflage, as in different habitats like woodland or open grassland. Another suggestion is that the darker ones may survive better in Scotland because they'll absorb the warmth quicker, therefore become more active. Third suggestion is something to do with a search image, whereby when the parents, thrushes, go out hunting, they'll look for a particular appearance. And they'll keep on feeding until those are mostly taken. They'll then latch onto a, a different 
expanding pattern. Continue eating those until they have also been depleted, and so on 